of guests. Therefore, it's time for member statements. Member from Kitchener, Conestoga. Speaker, just yesterday, MAD Canada's Waterloo Region chapter launched their annual project, Red Ribbon Campaign, to raise awareness about impaired driving during the holiday season. And while I would like to spend my time telling you about motorist dedication to the elimination of impaired driving here in Ontario, a shockingly sad fatal accident on Highway 78 last night reminds us all how far we have to go. Speaker, the same day that MAD Waterloo launched Project Red Ribbon, a 29-year-old mother from London was killed and her two-month-old sent to hospital in critical condition following a crash with an impaired driver in my community. It's heartbreaking, Speaker, and it begs the question as to what more we, do we have to do to get drunk drivers off our roads. The fact is the threat of serious fines and suspensions are failing to prevent tragic, preventable accidents that are claiming innocent victims, tearing families apart, and allowing perpetrators to walk away. While our thoughts go out to the family and all families who've had to endure the unescapable lifelong impacts of fatal impaired collisions, we ask that more can be done to get the message through. Impaired driving is unacceptable in our society, in our province, period. And I look forward to any further direction we can take to drive that message home before any more lives are lost. Again, I thank MAD, Waterloo Region, and all the chapters for their Project Red Ribbon campaign and thank our officers for their holiday ride checks. And I remain dedicated to further steps to ensure the heartbreaks tied to impaired driving no longer take the tragic toll on the people here in the province here, here. of Ontario. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from Kitchener-Waterloo. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to speak about Ontario's craft distilleries, a small, new, and until now growing sector of Ontario's beverage alcohol sector. Two weeks ago, the Minister of Finance delivered his fall economic statement in this House. Two days later, the Liberal government tabled Bill 70. The next day, I received a briefing on the bill. That whole week, not one person in the government mentioned that this year's fall economic statement will mean the end of Ontario's craft distilleries. The Ontario Craft Distillers Association noticed the changes in Schedule 1 of Bill 70, and they responded. From the OC ODCA press release dated November 18th, Ontario's dispiriting distillery tax deals major blow to homegrown small batch spirits. This bill demonstrates that the Liberal government doesn't support the growth of small business or a healthy and competitive domestic market. Since then, distillers across the province have told me that if Bill 70 passes without amendment, they will be closing their doors. There are simple changes that this government could have made which would have allowed these small businesses, these entrepreneurs, to succeed. They asked for a graduated tax rate, like the craft beer industry has, a lower rate for smaller producers. They asked for a per-liter taxation, again, like the beer industry has, so producers can invest in the quality of their product and are taxed on just what ends up in the bottles. Both of these requests were ignored. These craft distillers deserve a fighting chance to be successful in the province of Ontario. Will this government listen? Further member statements, the member from Northumberland, Point to U.S. Thank you, Speaker. It's my true honour to be able to attend the 2016 YMCA Northumberland Peace Medal Breakfast in Coburg this past Wednesday. The YMCA Peace Medal is presented to an individual or group, providing a model for how each of us can contribute to caring, community and peace. For 28 years, the Northumberland YMCA has awarded medals to individuals and groups, youth and adults, for their efforts to change our community and our world through selfless action. YMCAs across Canada urge our communities to celebrate the local people who work to make a, a difference in the lives of others and who demonstrate how any one of us can make a meaningful contribution to peace a better community, and a better world, Speaker. A special recognition to Happy Merlot, an avid YMCA and community supporter, was honored postmortally <clears throat> after she lost her battle with cancer in April of this year. I want to personally thank these incredible individuals and so many other volunteers for giving of their time selflessly to make our community a better place to live, work, and play. Speaker, thank you, and it was truly an honor to be there last Wednesday. 
Thank you. Further member statements? member from Napier and Carleton. Thank you very much, Speaker. It's my pleasure to be here today at the Ontario Legislature to talk about a wonderful initiative that occurred in my riding a week and a half ago in Napier and Carleton. My daughter goes to Manordale Public School, and Manordale Public School in the last year has welcomed seven, 70 young Syrian refugees into their, their community. And as a result, obviously, that our, our community has welcomed the mums and the fathers, uh, the aunts and the uncles, and the grandparents of those families. But it was the leadership of my friend Carol Miller and uh, the president of the Manordale Wood Vale Community Association, Miles Eagle who brought together a newcomers event just eight days ago uh, with the City of Ottawa, with the Nepean Rideau Osgood Community Resource Centre and the Catholic Immigration Services of Ottawa, among others. And what I saw there, Speaker, was nothing short of wonderful. A big Canadian flag on a piece of cake that the kids were running to, very proud that they were able to have a piece of that. But I also saw a young man, 14 years old, his name is Caleb Kiernan. When he found out that there was a newcomers event, Speaker, he asked his father to clean his bike, and he wanted to draw the bike for the Syrian refugee children in our community so that they would have something that they wouldn't have had if they were in Syria and still may not have as they've made their new life in Canada. Speaker, I was very proud to be part of that with uh, councillors Michael Kakish and, uh, and, and Keith Igli. Uh, but I think it's also important for us to recognize that as we welcome these young children into our communities, that we must have sufficient language services at our schools across Ontario. And it's something I addressed with the Ottawa Carleton District School Board uh, this past Friday, and one that I want to reiterate on the floor of the Legislative Assembly here today. Thank you. Thank you. For the member's statement, the member from Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. It's my pleasure to rise today on behalf of my constituents of Windsor West and continue to fight the high cost of hydro that are impacting so many in my community. For months, my constituents have written letters, signed petitions, and even sent their hydro bills to the Premier and Minister of Energy in an effort to raise awareness and get relief from their ballooning hydro bills. Businesses in my community are struggling to keep the lights on. For Kebab and Curry, a restaurant in Windsor's downtown core, the lights may be off permanently if relief from skyrocketing hydro bills doesn't come soon. Other area businesses have contacted me to tell me that the cost of hydro is their number one barrier to expansion, the number one barrier to bringing more jobs into my community. Speaker, it's not just businesses that are feeling the impact of ballooning hydro costs. Unfortunately, it's often our most vulnerable citizens who are impacted by this government's mismanagement of our energy system. Today, the Ontario Association of Food Banks released a report showing that the cost of electricity bills are making it more difficult for people who are already struggling to put food on the table. As for the government's plan to provide an 8 percent rebate on hydro bills, well, to quote the OAFB, it is still arguably insufficient for many food bank clients who are trying to cover three to seven hundred dollars in hydro bills each month. Sorry, three hundred to seven hundred. Speaker, Ontario families need real relief from their hydro prices. Businesses need affordable energy to expand their operations and grow our economy. It's time for this government to, to commit. They failed Ontario families. Admit the sale of Hydro One was ill-conceived, and you. work to provide relief for families across Ontario. Further member statements. The member from uh, Brampton, Springdale. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, today I'm going to speak about an anti-bullying campaign that's being hosted in the Peel region by our local police and local educators. This is a campaign that they've been now hosting for five years, and it's actually a contest. From now until April, high school students in the Peel region will have the will have an opportunity to submit posters and videos into this contest. And the best thing about this contest is that they're anti-cyberbullying messages created by youth for youth. This year's theme is what if everyone did something to stop cyberbullying. And uh, winning entries in the annual contest will have their posters displayed on Mississauga and Bar Brampton Transit buses. The videos will be shown at our local Cineplex theatres. Uh, one winner is chosen from each school board for the poster category and for the video category from both Peel District School Board and our Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board. Last, uh, last year, Kelly Tang from St. Margaret Duville, which is in my riding of Brampton Springdale, was the poster winner, and I look forward to winners from the Brampton community this year as well. I encourage all the students in the Peel region to participate in this great initiative. I, bullying is an important issue, and we, if we can all work together and create and build awareness around this issue, I know that we can put an end to it, and it's so important that our schools are safe and inclusive for everyone. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Very nice. Thank you. The member from Prince Edward Hastings. Speaker, there are
are days that I think if the government had set out with an agenda to throttle small rural communities, then they are most definitely succeeding. They've forced energy projects over them over their objections. They've allowed assessments on agricultural lands to get out of control. The broken funding formulas for health care are taking their toll on rural hospitals. They've privatized Hydro One, which distributes power to most of rural Ontario, which is going to leave rural users at the whim of fat cat Liberal Bay Street buddies. And now, they're closing our schools. This government has made it easier than ever to close schools in small rural communities. Governments in Ontario have always believed that in order to get the complete experience at school, we didn't want kids spending hours upon hours on school buses. Every government except this one. They'll tell you it's declining enrollment. We just can't keep the schools open because there aren't enough kids. But between the 2013-14 and 2014-15 fiscal years, the cost of electricity at the Hastings Prince Edward School board went from $1.8 million to $2.5 million. That's an increase of almost 40 percent in one year, and it's all because this Liberal government and this Premier made it almost impossible to keep the lights on. So if you're worried that your school is going to close like the people in Sophiasburg in my riding are, don't buy the line that it's about enrollment. It's not worth the paper it's written on. It's because the government made it impossible to keep the lights on. That's why your kids are going to spend up to four hours a day on a school bus. Thank Shameful. you, Mr. Shameful. Speaker. Further member, further member statements? A member from Etobicoke North. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much, Speaker. On behalf of the entire Liberal Caucus and our leader, Premier Kathleen Wynne, and as a proud member of the Muslim faith, along with three other colleagues of mine, I was appalled to learn, Speaker, unfortunately, of the member from Lanark Front Neck, Lennox Addington's uh, support of Islamophobic rhetoric. By retreating a uh, prejudiced tweet, Mr. Hillier once again highlighted a divisive position that stems from ignorance and fear-mongering in a time where we need to uplift one another and encourage acceptance. I would strongly advise and implore and respectfully request my colleagues, as well as Ontarians broadly, to avoid Trumpism North. We as, Antor and as Ontarians pride ourselves on the success of multiculturalism and celebrate, Speaker, our differences. That action that I just re referenced was a direct attack on the values we fight so hard to uphold. There is a troubling and dangerous pattern that has emerged, which of course is targeting a particular community. We all remember, for example, the distasteful campaign launched by the federal conservatives regarding barbaric cultural practices. Speaker, I happened to be in Washington, D.C. in August of 2016, where I had the privilege and honor of meeting Khizr and Ghazala Khan, the parents of Captain Humayun Khan, who died in Iraq, and their inclusivity, their celebration of life, their celebration of multiculturalism and diversity is something, Speaker, I think that we could emulate here in the province of Ontario. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further members' statements? The member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, I'm pleased to rise today to discuss uh, osteoporosis month, which occurs through November. Osteoporosis is a medical condition in which the bones become brittle and fragile from reduced density, typically as a result of hormonal changes or, uh, or as a deficiency in calcium or vitamin D. This bone fragility causes risk of bone, broken bones or fractures, particularly in the hip, spine, wrist, and shoulder. Osteoporosis can affect both males and females, young and old, exercising healthy lifestyles or not. What is most alarming is the fact that this loss of density can come without any warning signs. Fractures alone from osteoporosis are more common than heart attacks, strokes, and breast cancer combined. One in three women and one in five men will suffer from an osteoporotic fracture in their lifetime. This year, the Osteoporosis Canada is encouraging Canadians to wear purple to help spread the awareness. They're also encouraging everyone to discuss the importance of nutrition and exercise, to know your risk of fracture and insist on assessment if you have broken or fractured a bone. There is no known cause for osteoporosis, but physicians and healthcare providers try to actively enforce a rich diet in calcium and vitamin D for Canadians to maintain their healthy bones. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Osteoporosis Canada for all they work to do to provide information and support to those living with osteoporosis. I'd also like to thank the countless patients, volunteers, and our healthcare professionals who actively raise awareness surrounding the disease and help prevent and manage osteoporosis within our communities. Thank you very much. Thank you. I thank all members for their comments. Uh, the member from Tamiskimi.